Welcome into Band of Betters, a sports betting show for fans looking to be more data-driven. Brad Kronthal here with my brother Spencer Kronthal. We are of Alloy Sports, sports betting app that helps you win more of your bets. And we can prove it from our records this weekend, and we'll get to that in a bit. Spencer, welcome in. How was your weekend watching football? My weekend was great. We had some upsets. We had some big games. We had nice prime time prime time win for the Ravens this past week as well as as well as the Chiefs on Sunday night. I think this week had a little bit of it all. Yeah, I was at a wedding this weekend. Actually didn't watch as much because there was a wedding and ended up with a perfect weekend. So, maybe I got to do that a little more often? Maybe. We'll see. So, let's start with our opening act, our favorite moment from week 9 of the NFL season. Spencer, where are you looking? Talk about upsets. Turning the tide. Detroit Lions finally taking down Rodgers in the pack. Can't say it was much that the Lions did as much as Rodgers completely disintegrating when he came in the red zone. Normally so lethal. Multiple red zone interceptions right on the goal line. Absolutely killer. I think the Lions are now 2-6, and six, so half a game back of Green Bay still. Still can't quite catch up, but Aaron Rodgers, are we seeing – is this the decline or – do they just need a receiver that badly? Well, he did cash out, so he got that nice big contract for a few years from Green Bay, 50 mil a year. So, I mean, did not expect to see this type of Aaron Rodgers this season. Green Bay losing to Detroit, that, that is an abominable loss. My favorite moment from Week 9, how about the J-E-T-S Jets, Jets, Jets beating the Bills at home? Looked like it was going to go the way we all thought it might. Buffalo scoring a touchdown early with Allen running it in. But the Jets recovered. Strong defense. Sauce Gardner intercepting Allen. And then they actually got Allen injured at the end of the game. Relentless D from the Jets. Jess, Zach Wilson was solid. The Jets are 6-3 and three under Robert Sala. And that division is as close as any in the NFL now with all four teams being above 500. Did you think the Jets were going to win this weekend? I can't say I did, but um, it looks like we're seeing the resurfacing of Revis Island in the form of Sauce Gardner. I mean, I'm not talking about rookie of the year. I'm talking about potential defensive player of the year, potentially the top corner in all of football right now. You go to Gardner, or we'll call it Sauce Island for right now, you're not coming out with the ball. Bills, 6-2. Jets, 6-3. and three. Dolphins six and three, Patriots five and four. Crazy division right now. The Bills are still favorites. Last I checked it, Vandal at minus three twenty. The Jets are plus twelve hundred. They're half game out. Is this a bet? You know, maybe you, you lay it on the Jets. They keep proving us wrong and continue to stack up those wins. Some good value if you like the Jets. Is there any chance in your mind that they can somehow take this AFC East? I, I, I'm 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 going to say I'm smarter than to to put my money on two New York teams winning their division this year, and I've already laid it on the Giants. So the way I see it is, I don't know if it's Buffalo's division for the taking, but I'd rather stick with the teams that are quarterback driven. So if not Buffalo, I'm looking at Miami. That offense is looking unstoppable right now as well. I think there's too much for the Jets to overcome with two tough teams. Can never count out the pass of Belichick. I do think they're the worst team in the division. That being said, I'm looking at Miami or Buffalo. It was a yes or no. The Jets, yay or nay. I don't want to hear about Miami. So you don't think the Jets are going to win. All right, whatever. All right, well, let's go to our receipts from last week. We were really excited about our results. Obviously, we're always using the Alloy app to help make our betting picks using the data that we found with our betting strategies. So, Spencer, let's start with you pulling up your results here from week nine. Take us through your picks. And you started with Jacksonville plus one and a half. Nope, nope. Atlanta, Atlanta plus three, a push. Yeah, so went three, two, and two this week. Had the two pushes. Atlanta, I'll take the push. It was coming down to the field goal at the end, so really not much I could do there. To see the Rams push at the end after having the lead, letting mm-hmm. Brady, who had done nothing the entire game, not even just this game, the last couple of weeks, come down for that game-winning touchdown, was pretty frustrating to see that one push. Seattle was one I felt extremely confident with them as an underdog, the way they're trending. Indy. Quarterback play, figured New England might have their own issues as well. Obviously, not on the right side of that. Jacksonville finally went my way after picking them a couple weeks. Tennessee, for me, was an easy one to pick. Obviously, never want to bet against Mahomes, but 
you know, thinking the ground control and, you know, obviously you can look at it in hindsight playing the Monday morning quarterback in this case, but road grader strategy, drive extender strategy, you know, looking at Tennessee, ground and pound, keep the game close. And that's what they did. Lane 12 and a half, I think the line got up to 14. And finally with New Orleans, I think I was a little jaded as a hometown Baltimore fan thinking that the offense hasn't been performing, defense hasn't been doing well and made the numbers maybe fit a little bit too well to pick New Orleans on Monday night. Come on, man. Baltimore wasn't losing after that Roquan edition, but I, I agree with you. That Tennessee game, and I'll get to mine in a second. You can see here, we track our picks on bet stamp, completely transparent. You can see how we're doing. So, see here, Spencer, you're 17, 16, and 2, above 500. Minus 2.1% closing line value. I mean, I thought they factored in Malik Willis uh, originally. Went up to 14. Didn't really matter. This was not a sweat at all. As it went to overtime, Casey wins by a field goal. But one of those games, like, I'm pretty sure Derrick Henry and the Titans O-line is still pretty solid. Um, they should be able to do some damage against the Chiefs defense. And they did just that. Thought Tennessee was going to win it outright. But, you know, they end up covering anyway. Not a sweat at all. I liked you on that one. But you're right. There was a few games this weekend that went right down to the wire, flipped at the very end that led to a few pushes. So, interesting interesting betting weekend i'm gonna pull up my picks from the week and one that i am very excited about as i share it now 4-0 awesome i mean what what else can i say perfect week we'll start with the chargers this one was a little shaky i had the chargers money line uh, minus 165, that lowered a bit closer to game time, but got the win and the payout there. Seattle plus two, Geno Smith. I mean, what can you say about him? The rise of Geno and the continued decline of Cl Cliff Kingsbury and the Arizona Cardinals. A lot of turmoil there in Arizona. You could see Kyler Murray going off at Hopkins and Kingsbury. Surprised he is still in charge in week 10, that being Cliff Kingsbury. Tennessee just touched upon really like that bet from the get-go seemed a little odd it could have been one of those games where Kansas City just comes out and wins by 28 points but played the way I liked it and then I went against you here on the Saints Ravens games I took the Ravens uh money line at minus 134 I used the ground and pound strategy as well as the chain mover uh, both of which we've already referenced in our content insights page so you can check those out but 4-0 week Ravens come through in the end to cap it. Really happy. This week, this year, I'm 21, 16, and 1, up 2.7 units um, in a solid ROI that we're looking to extend. But I'm going to use this to brag for a second. I think, what's that, six in a row? Hit my last six bets. So feeling a little in fuego right now, Spencer. Well, feeling good. Just, about just to... Uh... Just to cool you down a little, I would like to say my record is not 17 and 16, 16 and 12. I double double tracked a couple of times on bet stamp by accident. Just went through the receipts one more time. There so you go. not as far ahead as you think. But even with those losses by accident on the bet stamp tracking in real life, you're obviously better, <laughs> which I am too. Coincidentally, we're still figuring out the, uh, the bet stamp product at the beginning of the year, but now we're good at it. Still about 500. Even though you threw on a few extra losses there. <laughs> yeah, I had, so, had, had a couple double clicks there by accident. So <laughs> Happens to the best of us. Still about 500, though. So let's take this time to do our favorite portion of this show and look towards week 10 of the NFL season, this being our forecast. Spencer, what strategies are you using when looking to this coming week in the NFL? So I'm pulling up the app right now. A couple that I like. Obviously, that ground. Real down. time like betting. Drive. You see it right now. I, I like He's doing my, it in real time. I, I like my drive extender strategy. Here's the app up right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to see where they overlap a little bit. So I'm liking Seattle plus two and a half this, this upcoming, uh, I guess that's Sunday. <laughs> I like Cleveland. I like Minnesota to cover. I'm liking Arizona as well. And then I'm on the fence as. One strategy is saying take the Chargers against San Fran at plus seven. I think I might take that. Another one is Indy at plus six and a half against Vegas. I think I might steer clear of Indy this week. Knowing the quarterback issues, we use you know some of the data season to date. Can't always, can't always fully account for injuries or changing, changing players. Indy might be one that I choose to avoid this week. 
Awesome. There's a few games I like as well with some overlap. Love Seattle plus two and a half. Right now, I'd love to see that number get to at least three. If I'm a Seattle backer here, get that field goal in the spread. Give me Seattle. Might wait to play that one. See if it goes a little bit higher than that, though it could dip. I mean, Seattle's hot. Cleveland plus four at Miami. Like that line. Like that number. Like the running game that Cleveland's bringing to the table. They played really well against Cincinnati last week or or their last game going into the bye. And they are uh, getting pretty strong there in the run game, playing well off that. So I'm going to go with them. Tough game here is Jacksonville plus nine and a half at Kansas City, who will be coming off a tough win against the Titans. Travis Etienne, he has become a major difference maker in Jacksonville. I'm not confident right now, but I'm going to like this bet. This strategy, it's hit for a few. The bet me consistently that's hitting for heavy underdogs at a 60% clip has them. I believe it's also in my ground and pound strategy as well. So it is, and that one's hitting at 57% over the last three years. Give me Jacksonville. Why the heck not? I'm hot. Give me the Jaguars. And now this one's interesting for me. I've got a few that likes Arizona. And I'm one that likes the Rams. Personally, I like the Rams in this one. I'm going to steer clear for now on that. My favorite three, and these are subject to change, would be Seattle, Cleveland, and Jacksonville to start Week 10. Love it. I think we're agreeing on Seattle and Cleveland. I think for me, a little bit up in the air. If I had to throw a third... I'm going to throw, a, th- throw an interesting one with, with Minnesota laying quite a few points against Buffalo next week. like that, too. Could that rise, though? That's the question. If Allen is indeed out, I think they're accounting for it a little now because Buffalo's at home, Minnesota's plus six. If Allen's confirmed out, you got to think that number would only increase. I mean, Minnesota's playing great ball. Only one loss. Exactly. Absolutely. Exciting. So are you, week are you waiting for that always. line to, to shift to, to make a play? Are you ready to go on it now? Minnesota's seven and one. They're winning close games. I mean, they have a strong run game. They got to go up there to Buffalo. I, th- I think I'm ready to get in now with my decision. You know, I want to <laughs> get in early. I think, I think it's, it's, it's data that I like regardless. Obviously if Allen is out, it's only going to make that decision easier because the line probably shift. you know, will shift more in Minnesota's favor. So I think it's one that I want I want to move on. Almost a whole touchdown. Minnesota's looking hot. Cousins has the swag. They're on they're on a roll. I was wondering because I have one strategy that likes Minnesota, and it's actually the one that uh that you built that I saved. So thank you for that. It's the drive extenders strategy. So since 2014, the strategy's hit at 55%. Big sample size, likes Minnesota plus six. You can only think it's gonna go up if Allen's out. So we will see. Any final thoughts before we, you know, put in our winning bets and look to cash out over the weekend? I think we got another big week ahead of us. I think, you know, Geno Smith going to keep things up. Is Buffalo going to bounce back? Is Miami going to keep it up? We mentioned the AFC East. I think we've got a big week ahead of us as we start to hit. I guess we're in the back half of the season now. As we approach week 10, got set eight, eight weeks left. Nine, if you include this week, we're coming. We're coming around the corner on this NFL season, and I'm excited to see what happens this week. I'm excited to see Saturday on Sunday. Jeff Saturday, the new Colts interim head coach, that owner Jim Ursay just pulled out of nowhere, is now running the Colts. Former center under Peyton Manning has the bravado, has the moxie. Let's see if he can come in in week ten meet a whole new group of guys, and lead them into battle on Sunday. Um, That's going to be interesting. So I am excited to see how the Colts do, uh, minus Frank Reich. Absolutely. Well, that is Band of Betters. Appreciate you guys tuning in and watching this. As you know, you can find us at Band of Betters on Twitter and at Alloy Sports. We are on the Hammer Betting Network Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you next week.